everybody. Welcome back to my second button video. Um, this is going to be on how I glaze my buttons. So I'm going to be doing a small stack of medium Michigan buttons. And I, I raspberry glaze. My raspberry has to be a little thicker than some of my other glazes, so we're going to hold them in a little bit longer. Um, okay, so I've got my pile of, of bisqued um, buttons here. These are bigger than the ones that I made in the, in the first video. So I'm going to just line them up on my hand. Um, back out and then I just hold them with two fingers and then um, just touch it to the top of the glaze and you can see can you see the the glaze that's all like gathered in there I have to blow that out and then I'll give it a shake to flick the rest of the glaze off and then, um, let's see if you can see that. I use my middle finger to flip it so that I can easily lay it down on the board right side up. So I will do this pile. And I always want to make sure that my glaze is well stirred because I'm only using that very surface. And so we want enough solids to be up there. So. If I don't go thick enough on these, they turn a weird pink color. So I need to remember to hold them in a little bit longer. Some people seem to like the weird pink color. I'm not too partial to it. I wonder if I should be leaning over further to blow these out. Sometimes that happens when you do the flicking. So I'll take care of that when I clean up the backs before they get put in the kiln. And I'll show you what I do for that. But for the most part, blowing out the holes um, before you do the flicking tends to take care of that. You don't get so much blow back if you blow out the holes. And I'm putting them in so at least half of the, the side edge is being submerged because I I do want the glaze to go you know down the sides I just don't want them to stick to the shelf because I do fire them flat they don't um they don't get put on wires or anything like that I don't have any kind of racks I just have bunches of shelves and one inch posts Okay, let's turn that up a little bit. And maybe.
And if you had any clay irregularities, like, you know, crumbs that you missed brushing off um, and you didn't think your glaze was going to cover it, now would be the time to take care of that with a, you know, diamond burr pad um, before you glaze them because that needs to be done wet. Um, and then I use that same diamond burr pad once they're fired, if any glaze has gone through the holes or around the back from the sides, um, I can use that diamond burr sanding pad to sand off any glaze that's on the back. But rather than just expecting that to happen and having to have kiln wash um, saving my butt, where did that one go? There's the one. Okay, I've got that one with the with the blowback on the back. So I'm just going to take my damp sponge, put that on there, and give it a bit of a swipe. And that's mostly off of there. There. And then I can take this and just give it a little bit of a twist or just drag it across and there you can see, or maybe you can't, ah, heck, there, okay, so that one's all cleaned up and ready to fire, so that's how I do those, like I said, I just fire them flat, um, sand them if anything goes around to the back, um, the trickiest part was, was, uh, getting that rhythm down with my fingers of flipping it from upside down to right side up to lay it on the, on the board. Once you get the hang of that, it goes really fast. So that's how I do my buttons. Easy. <laughs> yes, they take some time, but I also sell them for $4 a piece. So it doesn't really bother me any. Um, they're not a huge seller, but I do sell at fiber festivals so and knitters tend to like the larger more decorative buttons and that is what my stamps are very well suited to so that's what I uh, that's what I do well thank you for watching and I'm sure I'll have some other videos for you soon thanks bye